stars are right, and that means it's time for another episode of The Whisper in Darkness. I'm your host, the man from Lang. Thank you very much for joining me today. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the stream. Glad you could join me today. We are uh, going to be playing some Arkham Horror LCG. We've got uh, Roland Banks and Joe Diamond uh, all set up. That's right. We are going to be playing uh, two-handed today for the first time in... Uh, Many, many months, so I'm hoping the stream will be able to keep me on the straight and narrow, especially with uh, Joe Diamond's, uh, uh, is it a Super Equity? Okay, that's interesting. Uh, how is that? Is that better? I hope that uh, solves the issue. Or maybe that. Let's see. How is that? Is that still echoey? Is it echoey now? Or is it... Uh, let me know. Alright. Looks like we solved the echo problem. I'm just going to... Exactly now. Okay. All right. That's what I thought. All right. Well, I just need to uh, turn off that uh, that setting, and uh, everything should be uh, working all right now. Welcome, uh, Edward Jerome Shadow War ninety two Cryo Shark. There we. Yeah. I I thought I had the uh, the settings. Uh, I was working. I'm using a, a new program. I'm using Streamlabs now, and I thought I had the settings all worked out. And uh, now we're back apparently to uh, to Echo. So I will have to uh, try to figure out what's going on there. Anyway, we are here to play some uh, Arkham Horror LCG, not to discuss my uh, my uh, technical issues that have uh, plagued me for the past couple days trying to get my new system uh, up and running. We are playing uh, Roland Banks and Joe Diamond today to, uh, to play some two-handed. We are going to be playing The Forgotten Age, and uh, if things go well, we may turn it into a campaign, and we will play uh, all eight scenarios and see how they do in the end. Partially, uh, I want to play this because it is uh, the campaign I probably played the least out of all of them, but uh, and also because I need to prepare for Arkham Knights 2019, where we will be doing the Iron Man with, uh, with my team, and we will be playing the Forgotten Age, so I need to uh, familiarize myself with this uh, particular uh, this campaign again. Hi, Ben. Welcome to the stream. Before we uh, get started, we have a couple of uh, housekeeping things to take care of. First of all, yesterday I did launch the 2019 Patreon Drive. If you uh, haven't signed up already, make sure you head over to www.patreon.com and uh, pick a tier that you like and uh, choose your, uh, your, uh, your rewards. These are the uh, awesome patrons who have signed up already. We've got Nate, we've got Christopher Collins, we've got Paul D. Curlin, Ben, Brian Nelson, Tim Fiscus, Gerald Davies, and Nathan Early have already signed up to be uh, to support the channel. These are the guys who are bringing you the uh, great Arkham Horror content, and uh, I hope you'll uh, say hello to them in the chat or online if you see them and thank them for uh, for supporting this channel. If you'd like to get your name in the uh, on the list, you just need to head over to Patreon, and it's two bucks a month, and you will uh, join the Plateau of Lang tier, and you'll get your name uh, on the uh, Patrons Embracing the Darkness list. Okay, the other housekeeping uh, measure, I should uh, post a link to that uh, page in the chat, if you just give me a second here. And... Uh, I will post that link for you, and uh, you can head over there and uh, and uh, enjoy the uh, the great uh, pick a tier that you like and uh, support. Any support that you can provide is uh, greatly appreciated. The other housekeeping measure I would need to mention is that tomorrow 
on uh, Thursday, July 27th, I believe it is, I am going to be streaming of everything, fingers crossed, if everything works out and I can fix all the technical issues before then, I'm going to be streaming the Sinking City, the new Cthulhu uh, Mythos-inspired uh, game that's uh, being released where you basically play an investigator and you uh, you are exploring the town of Oakmont, I believe, and you encounter all sorts of nasty mythos creatures and uh, have to solve puzzles. It sounds like I'm going to need, uh, may need some help from uh, the chat on those, so uh, if you do have a chance to drop by and uh, check that out, I'd love to have you. It's uh, something a little different and uh, and uh, but uh, we will still be playing the Arkham LCG. Don't uh, don't worry about that. Yeah, hi uh, hi Vase, Roland, and Joe. It is going to be a little bit tough for them uh, because we do have the uh, they are going to be poisoned probably, and uh, they're going to suffer all sorts of. They do have enough fight, I think, to uh, to defeat all the enemies, but uh, we will have to see uh, where we stand in the. Uh, how they make it through. All right, uh, thanks again to all the patrons who've signed up. Let's take a look at the uh, the decks that we are playing. Now, Roland and Joe are uh, an interesting bunch because they are one of the few investigators that you can actually uh, build at level zero. You can basically build the same deck in either investigator uh, because they both use seeker and uh, guardian cards. Uh, you can build the exact same deck in both, and then the only difference between them will be uh, will be when they start to purchase uh, their upgrades, because they uh, obviously Joe cannot purchase uh, Guardian upgrades above level two, and Roland cannot purchase Seeker upgrades above level two, so they start to specialize a little bit more, but they are uh, basically uh, the same at level zero. If you're uh, stuck for a Joe Diamond uh, deck building ideas, you can simply go over to Arkham DB and, and copy one of the uh, great Roland Banks decks there, and that uh, is a good way to get yourself started. Here are the decks. They are both built by Start With a Name, so they are somewhat similar. Uh, we have Roland Banks here. He has a 45 automatic machete and his uh, 38 special as well as uh, uh, Vicious Blow and Beat Cop to handle combat. He's using Art Student Beat Cop and uh, Dr. William T. Mallison as his allies and he's got calling in favors in there to, uh, to grab the allies that he needs. Art Student obviously gets him some free clues in addition to his, uh, his awesome response when he defeats enemies. And uh, we also have, what have we got? Logical reasoning in there to, pr to protect ourselves from, uh, from some of the horror loss. And uh, his uh, skills package is pretty straightforward. We've got Eureka in there to, uh, hello, Matsu Toritaka, welcome to the stream. Wow, Madrid, awesome. Glad you could make it today. We've got, uh, and uh, skills, we've got Eureka Guts, Inquiring Mind, of course, Overpower, and Vicious Blow. There's also a, one copy of Fieldwork in there to help him with some of his skill tests. Joe Diamond, he's, uh, he's going to be doing, hopefully, most of the clue gathering. He's going to be using his uh, awesome intellect as well as flashlight, magnifying glass, and Dr. Mylan Christopher. He's also packing a 45 automatic and a couple of machetes and beat cop and Vicious Blow to uh, handle any enemies. The uh, Hunch deck, I had to remove a couple because this uh, deck has uh, 15 in it, which I think is too many, uh, but uh, we only get to include 11. And uh, his Hunches include uh, just solid Proven Guardian and Seeker cards, including Evidence, Logical Reasoning, No Stone Unturned, uh, for some tutoring, Preposterous Sketches, Scene of the Crime and uh, Shortcut. I believe I moved the Shortcut over to the main deck uh, so we can uh, move when we need to. It's also got Working the Hunch if we need to. Uh, hi, Pluttercal. Welcome to the uh, welcome to the stream. Glad you could make it. Now, I had to... I did pick some... In case this turns into a campaign, I did pick some uh, some provisions for them. 
typically when I play Forgotten Mage, just uh, Untamed Wilds, I don't end up picking provi uh, any of the supplies. But uh, Roland went decided to go with provisions, medicine, torches, and a pendant, while Joe Diamond has provisions, blanket, binoculars, and the chalk. If we make it far enough, we'll get to uh, to pick some more uh, provisions uh, later down the road. But we'll see how they do in Untamed Wilds. I haven't played these two together, so it's uh, and I haven't played two-handed in a while, so it's going to be interesting to see how uh, how we do. Welcome to the channel, Michael. Glad you could make it today. We are set up and ready to go here in uh, Octagon. Just going to have some more coffee. It's early here on the plateau. And uh, we have, we are set up, <coughs> excuse me. So here is our two-handed setup. <coughs> the, uh, for some reason, my copy of the Expedition Path is, is not appearing, and it is the Witch Haunted Expedition Path. I need to go into Octagon and uh, fix that little, uh, little, uh, annoyance but uh, we know what the expedition path does we can uh, search for uh, uh, locations if we have a map but we don't have the map so we don't have to worry about that and then we uh, we can also resign there if necessary hopefully i will uh, remember to fix that before the next time i play this scenario we have uh, expedition into the wild is agenda 1a it's a it has a doom threshold of six and we have Exploring the Rainforest, which is Act 1A, and it is, uh, we need six clues, three clues per investigator. We will need to find Ichitaka and uh, hopefully get her on our side. And uh, thank you, Marco. We will, uh, we will do our best. It will be uh, challenging to remember the hunch deck i think more than anything i'm not too concerned because they're both uh, very solid investigators uh it's just going to be more a matter of remembering things because i'm terrible when i play uh when i play joe diamond hi fadi this is uh untamed the untamed wilds from the forgotten age campaign it's uh we have uh we are playing Joe Diamond and uh, Roland Banks. Roland Banks is going to be the lead investigator. Hey, Malaysia, awesome. Uh, one of my favorite places to, uh, to travel in the world. I have been there several times. Uh, fantastic country. Glad you could make it today. We have, uh, what else? We need to draw some weaknesses, so let's do that now. We will shuffle up our weaknesses so uh, Roland's weakness is going to be Chronophobia, a classic. We put it into our threat area, and at the end of our turn, we take one direct horror. We take, uh, hi, John, welcome to the stream. At the end of our turn, we take one direct horror, and if we uh, take two actions, we discard uh, Chronophobia. So that's kind of rough, considering uh, Sanity is not one of, uh, one of uh, Roland's strong suits. Let's switch over to Joe Diamond and see what he gets. I had to shuffle a couple of different cards in here, so hopefully I won't draw one. Yeah, we are playing two-handed today. Oh, yuck. We, we draw Haunted uh, for Joe Diamond's weakness. We will add it to our threat area, and we get minus one for each of our skills and take two actions to discard Haunted. That uh, is not, uh, not a weakness I have played with all that often. It's got a very uh, nasty effect if it does come out. But uh, I, uh, it's not one that I see all that often. All right, I'm just going to check things to make sure uh, the stream is working as it should. It looks good so far. I'm curious about the, uh, the audio issues we had earlier. Maybe I fixed it on the, uh, the intro page, but I didn't fix it over on uh, the other, uh, on the Octagon page. So we'll have to see. And uh, I'll have to work on that some more. All right, I think we're uh, ready to start. So let's draw our opening hand. So we will shuffle up our deck and we will draw our five cards. This is, we're gonna draw for Roland first off. Yeah, it's not overzealous. I don't, uh, don't wanna see that. Uh, logical reasoning, an overpower, 
There's an art student in uh, guts and a beat cop. Uh, well, not a not a dazzling hand by any stretch. But so we're gonna uh, we will mulligan the logical reasoning overpower and guts. Uh, there's another overpower as as per. Uh, Thanks, Vase. Glad to see that there's uh, there's no more audio issues. I'll have to keep that in mind in the future. Uh, there's an inquiring mind, not all that helpful, and a gut. So we mulliganed two two of the three cards. We mulliganed. We ended up drawing again. So that is uh, pretty much par for the course. Let's uh, see how we do for Joe Diamond. He will. Oh, I need to make uh, these cards visible. Should be there. We go. So we draw. Take the initiative, an inquiring mind, a vicious blow, a shortcut, and a deduction. What a garbage hand that is. Let's uh, get rid of most of these. In fact, I think I'm going to get rid of all of them because they're just not uh, that good. There's a eureka, a d unexpected courage. There's a beat cop, a steadfast, and a deduction. So. That time we only drew one card we mulliganed. Hi Regis, glad you could make it uh, from France. Awesome. Glad to see you here in the chat. Yeah, my family was, uh, we, we actually were in uh, Paris last year and I was uh, hoping to visit the catacombs for the, uh, just because of the Path to Carcosa campaign. I had my heart set on visiting the uh, catacombs of Paris uh, unfortunately, the lineup to get in was about six hours long, and uh, and uh, I was unable to uh, to get in. Hi, Captain Calamari. Welcome to the stream. I will uh, try my best not to go insane. Uh, I think we're set up and ready to go, so we are going to uh, to start. I think we will simply. I think for our first action, we are simply going to explore. Uh, yeah, we can just draw the top card of the exploration deck. So let's do that with uh, with uh, Roland Banks. So we will uh, hide the visibility on our exploration deck and shuffle it up. So as our first action, yeah yeah I'm glad to hear that it I wasn't the only one who was waiting six hours to get into the catacombs the uh, I think the uh, lineup for the Eiffel Tower was about uh, I think we spent four hours and we were there very late so all right our first uh, exploration is going to be lost in the wilds test three willpower and if you fail take one poor for each point you fail by I think we're gonna commit some cards to that, uh, let's see, we've got an unexpected courage and we've got a guts. So uh, Roland is gonna commit his guts to that. So he is gonna go five versus three. Let's see what the chaos bag has to say. Chaos bag gives us a minus two. So we do succeed. Yeah, well, I'm glad that uh, everyone uh, is uh, visiting the catacombs just because of uh, because of uh, that uh, particular scenario. I wanted to see it for myself. We've got a gut, so we do draw a card for that, and we get an emergency cash. Okay, still no weapon. We are going to know need to know a weapon. Uh, Fadi, I or or is it uh, Fadli? I haven't decided whether I'm gonna. We'll see how they do on this uh, particular scenario, and if uh, Roland and uh, Joe uh, prove their quality, we will uh, probably turn this into a campaign, so we can uh, be well be streaming it over the next couple weeks. And if they uh, crash and burn here, well then we'll uh, we'll go back to the drawing board and uh, start something fresh. So that was our first action, and we didn't uh, we didn't get anywhere, which is not all that surprising. So let's explore again. We will draw. There is the overgrowth. Overgrowth growth on the expedition path. First turn. 
Overcrowth, of course, being the one that uh, that uh, locks you out. Limit one per location. We've got to test uh, combat four or uh, intellect four to find another route to discard this card. What do we have? We've got an overpower. I don't really want to waste that on uh, on the overgrowth, but we don't have. We've got a four. We've got four. Uh, if we don't succeed, then maybe uh, Joe could try. Joe could try it. All right, let's try to uh, break the overgrowth as our final action with Roland. Uh, we will draw a from the chaos bag. Chaos bag gives us a minus three, so that is not going to be a success, unfortunately. That was Roland's turn. It's Joe's turn. Joe can't really do a whole lot until we get uh, uh, we remove the overgrowth, but we can get we can play this beat cop. So we will do that. And so we have he has plus one uh, plus one combat now. So we are up to five combat. So at least somebody can fight. Uh, no weapons yet, though, so we'll need to uh, draw one of those. Oh, we need to draw from the hunch deck. First turn, and I already forgot about the hunch deck. Hi, Ben. Welcome to the stream. The uh, hunch deck is... Oh, and we draw his, his weakness. First turn. Place one of your clues on this location with the highest shroud. Okay, we can't do that. If it would be shuffled into our hunch deck, add it to your threat area for the remainder of the game. When the game ends, Joe earns two fewer experience points. Well, that's about as bad as you can get because we have no clues. Yeah, so that's going to suck. So we're stuck with unsolved uh, the uh, unsolved case right off the bat. Apparently, there is no case on the expedition path. The, uh, so that is not great. Uh, now, did we... Yeah, we just did the uh, beat cop. So we do need to remove this, uh, this overgrowth. So let's give that a try. We will commit the... Uh, do we go... We're four versus four, so we could commit... Yeah, hi, Kevin. Welcome to the stream. Yeah, I can still play it, but I'm just gonna take the. I'm just gonna take the uh, the uh, experience point hit at the uh, end of the game, which is uh, is uh, not great. Uh, if 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 this turns into a campaign, for sure, uh, we've got Eureka. Uh, we could go either five versus four or six versus four. The Chaos Bag is fairly mild, except for that minus five. So I'm just going to use the Eureka, I think. Uh, and if we succeed, we can search the top three cards of our deck for something. Let's see what the Chaos Bag has to say. Chaos Bag gives us a zero. So we do succeed. So we get rid of the Overgrowth. Glad to see that gone. And we get to search the top three cards of our deck for a card. All right, so we have a take the initiative, a vicious blow, and a deduction. Not, uh, not great choices. We will take the, uh, the vicious blow, I think. Shuffle that up. All right, we've got one action remaining. Uh, we don't have a whole lot to do. Um, we, I guess we could explore. That's a pretty much our only uh, bet right now. So we will we will go exploring as our final action. There is the wow three. Uh, was that three of the uh, the treacheries right off the bat? We have to decide. Each investigator loses two resources. Each investigator takes one damage, or each investigator chooses and discards an asset he or she controls. I think we're going to just take the damage. So we'll each take a damage and that will be discarded. 
So three explorers and three uh, three treacheries. So not a great uh, start. That is the investigation phase. No enemies to speak of. We will go to the uh, the uh, upkeep phase. Joe draws a Eureka, and or sorry, uh, Roland draws a Eureka, and Joe draws Doctor Mylan Christopher. So, uh, wow, I wish I'd seen him a turn earlier. Let's add a Doom and uh, move on to the first Mythos phase of the game. We are going to be drawing first for Roland Banks. He will draw a Pit Viper. So that shows up. So we have our first enemy on the table. And Roland, or sorry, Joe, I'm going to confuse their names here every time. Uh, Joe Diamond, he draws a Lost in the Wilds. So we will need to commit something to that one. Uh, we do have a Steadfast that we can use. Uh, steadfast will give us, while well, we have five or more total remaining health and sanity, it gains, uh, so we get three icons out of that. So we will commit that. Uh, we will go uh, to five versus three. Chaos Bag is going to say, there's an Elder Sign. Okay, does that help us at all? Insight, of, we may move an Insight event from our discard pile to the bottom of our Hunch deck. We don't have, uh, we haven't even used the Hunch deck yet except to draw our weakness. So that will be that. But we don't take any uh, any issues from uh, Lost in the Wilds. And it will just go away. All right, it is the investigation phase. Let's draw from Joe's hunch deck. Joe's hunch this turn is a logical reasoning. So we can only play it if we have a clue. We get to choose an investigator at our location. Hello, Amelia. Welcome to the stream. Glad you could make it today. We are playing the Forgotten Age two-handed with Roland Banks and Joe Diamond. It is, uh, so far, we've uh, done a lot of exploring and haven't gotten very far. So it seems unlikely that we're going to be using Joe's Hunch this turn. But we do have a Viper to deal with. Now the Viper is not uh, killing it will add Vengeance, which is bad. But uh, neither of these guys is very good at, at, at evasion. We've only got two agility apiece. So I think what we're going to have to do... Uh, Joe might just take a swipe at it. Let's get our three actions. I think if Joe takes a swipe at it, he could kill it. He's got a five versus three. That's pretty good. Oh, I'm glad to hear that you crushed it. I, uh, I haven't had much luck. I seem to get to Heart of the Elders and then just end up spinning my wheels and playing that scenario. I think with my Leo Anderson deck, I ended up playing... Uh, Heart of the Elders Part 1 like seven times or something like that until I finally just got tired and put Elusive in my deck and, and then beat it. So I think Joe will uh, Joe will deal with this uh, with this Pit Viper. He will simply attack it. We will go 5 versus 3. Chaos Bag says minus 3. So that is unfortunate. So uh Roland is going to take a damage. Uh, we'll try it again. We shouldn't be hitting Roland, but... Uh, and we draw another minus three, so that is another damage. Wow! The uh, Chaos Bag is being harsh this morning. Well, can we do it three times in a row, you think? Let's see if we can draw a minus three three times. We draw a skull. That's minus X. Uh, where X is vengeance points. So that will uh, go to the victory display. So that was a big turn of nothing there. We took two damage uh, 
unfortunately, where I don't think we uh, really should be taking damage with the Chaos Bag being as it is. Some bad draws there. Uh, so it is Roland's turn. Roland has uh, nothing really to do. I'd sort of like to use my art student and then the beat cop. So we will go exploring and uh, see what we get. We explore and we get, there is the rope bridge. I believe the rope bridge is fair game. Just gonna check that quickly. I believe the rope bridge is, uh, no, this is not hard mode. It may seem like hard mode, but this is just standard. Yeah, the minus threes were a little, uh, little surprising. So yeah, rope bridge is fair game, so we can go there. All right, so we make some progress at last. So that's our first action and we move there. Second action, so the rope bridge is a two shroud location with one clue. When you attempt to explore while at rope bridge, you test two agility. If you fail, you cancel the exploration, take two damage, lose all your remaining actions and end your turn and you fall into the river canyon. Uh, again, agility not great. Yeah, glad to hear that you were able to post a, a victory, Amelia. It's always nice when you're able to finish off a campaign and uh, and uh, chalk up that win. That's always a, a great feeling. Okay, so we need... Now, we could play our art student now and grab this clue. But then we'd have to explore and... Uh, we do have an inquiring mind that could help us. Uh, yeah, let's uh, let's play the art student for two, and we grab this clue, which I haven't put on the location yet. So we grab a clue, then we could explore again. And if we explore, we're going to have to test two agility. So we could play our Eureka and go three versus two. All right, let's do that. We will explore and go three versus two. Chaos Bag says, oh my, there is a tentacle. Well, the Chaos Bag is being uh, mean right now. So that's going to be a failure, so we are going to take two damage. Uh, not two clues. Take two damage, so we're already at five of nine. Are there, oh right, there are two clues on the bridge. I forgot, I'm so used to playing solo that it's... Uh, Right, okay, that's going to change. That's my mistake. I have to go back then. Uh, we are not going to... Uh, that's just me playing solo so often that I uh, forget that uh, there's actually two clues per location. So we're just going to investigate again. We'll go... Uh, f what is it? Uh, three versus two. Chaos Bag will give us another minus three. So that is a failure anyway. Okay, well, that wasn't a great turn, as turns go. So, uh, nothing during the enemy phase. During the upkeep phase, we draw a beat cop for Roland, and uh, uh, Joe draws his Detective Colt 911s. So, uh, we've got, looks like Joe is going to be the fighter here, and... Uh, Roland is going to be the clue gatherer, which is not uh, what we want. We will gain our three actions, and we will go to the mythos phase. And I believe the hunch gets shuffled back into the hunch deck. So we will do that now. All right, Roland is first player. He will draw. There is an Estly Guardian. 
He is hanging out at the rope bridge. He is a uh, spawn at any empty location. Oh, so he's not going to spawn, period. Okay, so he's just going to whiff. Awesome. So Esli Guardian whiffs because there are no empty locations. Joe draws. There's an Ancient Evils. So that is going to go out of doom. Easy, uh, easy mythos phase. It's the beginning of the investigation phase. Let's draw for uh, the hunch deck. Joe's hunch this turn is going to be an evidence. So if we have an enemy, we could defeat it. I think Joe, uh, we only have three resources. We could sort of like to get a gun down. Um, if we gain a resource, play the gun, and then we can explore. Maybe we can find another location so we don't have to explore at the rope bridge. That might be ideal. So let's, we'll gain a resource, play our gun. And then we'll explore. We explore the Path of Thorns. I believe that is also fair game. Yes, it is. All right, so we have another location on the table. Joe will move there. Path of Thorns, of course, three shroud location. It has two clues because there I'm playing two-handed. And after you fail a skill test while investigating, we take a damage. And uh, after you explore, explore while at Path of Thorns, if the exploration was not successful, we take a damage. All right. Now, the art student isn't doing a whole lot for us, but uh, we could, uh, she could take the fall for us if we fall off the rope bridge. That would be nice, and then we could play our beat cop. Uh, am I planning to go with Alejandro or Ichtaka? I think I've always gone with Ichtaka. Um, probably I will go with Ichtaka simply because these two can probably uh, are, have a better shot of uh, passing her parlay test than, uh, than killing her at the moment, but we will see when we get there. First action with Roland, we will investigate. We'll go three versus two. Chaos Bag gives us a plus one. Nice. So we have two of six clues that we need. Now we're back to that, that agility test if we want to explore. We cannot get to the, the Path of Thorns from here. Uh, I believe it's the Circuitous Trail or one of the locations that's not in the exploration deck. So exploring from here isn't going to be great. Uh, exploring from the Path of Thorns is better. Uh, hmm. Do I want to bother moving, though? I would take all my actions to get there. Yeah, I think so. I just don't have the, the agility to... Uh, really the agility to be investigating at that location. All right, that is our turn. Let's shuffle this uh, hunch back in. And there's nothing in the enemy phase. We go to upkeep. Roland draws another art student and Joe draws an inquiring mind. So we're, we're doing well on the skills not great in terms of weapons. We do have this uh, this coal, the uh, detective's colt, which should have four on it. All right, get our actions back for next turn. Let's go to the mythos phase. We've got four of six doom on on the agenda. Roland is our first player, so he is going to draw. 
There is another pit viper. And Joe is going to draw a, an Estly Guardian. It can go to any empty location. Uh, now, can it? I think it attacks especially at each connecting location. So let's put him at the rope bridge because the rope bridge is not connected to the Path of Thorns. So he will not attack us next turn. All right, go to the investigation phase. Let's draw a hunch for uh, for uh, Joe. Joe gets another evidence. Uh, that's okay, because we can defeat an enemy at our location this turn and grab a clue. So I think what we'll do, we're not gonna shoot at, uh, at uh, Roland anymore. We will simply engage the Pit Viper. Then I am going to shoot at the Pit Viper. So we are five, uh, six, and we're dealing plus one damage. So six versus three. Chaos Bag gives us a minus two. So we do manage to kill the Pit Viper. And we're up to two Vengeance. Now we can use this Hunch to... <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Now we can use this hunch to uh, to grab a clue at our location. All right. Now we can. That was our f second action. Third action. We might as well investigate. We have. We are four versus three. Uh, we don't want to really... I think we'll commit Dr. Mylan to this because we've got a beat cop for now. So we'll go uh, 5 versus 3. Chaos Bag gives us a 0, so we do succeed. So we grab another clue. So we've got 4 of 6. So far, so good. 4 of 6 clues. And that is Joe's turn. Now, Roland, he can. Uh, we can explore from here. Now we've got, there are two possible locations. Uh, if we're not successful, we will take a damage. That's okay because the art student can take the hit for us. We've got another one we can play uh, if necessary. And we've got a beat cop. So we will explore. There is a snake bite. Ouch. Not happy to see that. Uh, snake bite test three agility, and if you fail, we have to deal five damage to an ally asset you control or take one direct damage, and then we are poisoned. Now, after you explore while at the path, if the exploration was not successful, we take a damage. Now, I'm not sure about the timing of that, whether that happens before or after we test this, but I don't want to be poisoned regardless. So let's commit this uh, inquiring mind. So we will go five versus three. Uh, a clue. No, we can't play that. Uh, we have to, no, we don't have anything we can play. Ooh, yuck. So that's gonna be Let's see what Joe has. Joe just has, he has an unexpected courage he can commit to this for Joe, for uh, Roland. So that will be four versus three. Not great odds. Um, do I commit that art student to go five versus three? Being poisoned is bad news. He does have medicine to get rid of it, but that's still not great. Yeah, let's commit it. We will go uh, four, five versus three. Chaos Bag says minus five. Wow, oh, that hurts. Okay. 
Yeah, poison is horrible. And uh, so I believe after you explore while at Path of Thorns, I take a damage. Okay, so I'm going to take a damage. And then I'm going to deal five damage to an ally asset. So that is that. We don't get poison, but we do uh, lose our art student anyway. Okay, well, hmm. I guess we can play our beat cop now. Let's throw our beat cop out there. So Roland is also a five combat. And we will go exploring again. There can't be that many. Uh, I think we've pulled most, if not all, of the, uh, the weaknesses out of here. Ah, uh, there's one more. So we're going to take another damage. Uh, the Beat Cop can take that one. Uh, we take a damage plus one additional as damage for each ally asset you control. Each other ancient investigator at an ancient location must uh, also take a damage. So we take a damage for failing the explore. Then we take two more because we uh, drew the arrows from the trees. Wow, that is uh, rough. I think we, I think that's all of the, uh, all of the treacheries out of the uh, exploration deck. But uh, Roland's taken six damage. And that will be our turn. So there should be, if I'm not mistaken, there should be the River Canyon uh, and the, uh, the Serpent, uh, Serpent's Haven and the Circuitous Trail, if I'm not mistaken, should be the final three cards in the Exploration deck. So we will have to hopefully, uh, now that we've cleaned out all the... Uh, so the enemy phase, the Estly Guardian cannot shoot us from where he is, so that's okay. Upkeep, uh, Roland draws a logical reasoning, which isn't all that helpful at the moment. No, I think these these are two city boys who got lost in the jungle and uh, are in... Uh, they're not used to dealing with snakes and all manner of uh, enemies. We've got, uh, and uh, Joe draws a magnifying glass, which I think he can, yeah, it's a tool asset, so it can uh, we can play that as well, which will be nice. All right, well, maybe now that we've gotten rid of all of the, uh, all of the uh, treacheries in the explore deck, we will, uh, we will be better off. We can make some progress here. Let's go to the Mythos phase. Five of six Doom. Roland draws. He draws an Ancient Evils, so that is going to advance us. So we add a Doom and we advance. Now we have to shuffle the Encounter discard pile and the set aside Agents of Yig encounter set into the encounter deck. So all of those treacheries that we dealt with, we get to deal with again. Uh, move all to encounter deck. Uh, Cryo Shark, I play with, I play, I'd say 99% of my games on Octagon simply because I like to be able to play. I play in all different types of situations. Like I, if I, uh, I find having to like sit down and set up a game with real cards is uh, is a pain sometimes. So if I get home from work and I just want to play a, a quick game before bed, I can play in. Uh... No, this is not Sinking City. Sinking City is coming tomorrow. Uh, if uh, cross my fingers, if everything works as it should. I will be streaming Sinking City tomorrow. Uh, the uh, yeah, I just I enjoy playing. Like if I get home from work, if I want to lie in bed and play, I can play on Octagon easily enough. If I want to play uh, on an airplane, I can do that. 
Uh, I do own two sets of the cards for when I go to uh, when if I go to things like Arkham Knights or Invocation events, so I can have all the decks built that I want to play. So I uh, one of the things I hate about LCGs is I hate swapping cards between decks. So it's easier for me just to uh, to try to build all of the decks uh, at once. So uh, yeah, I I just prefer. Yeah, I, I do like playing with real cards as well. It's, it is just the setup time that, uh, like in with Octagon, I can play like something like the Untamed Wilds, and then I can turn around and play like the Path to Carcosa scenarios, and I don't have to tear, tear anything down or set anything up. It's like you can play very quickly. So we, uh, we did advance. That was what we were doing. We, uh, we've shuffled all the cards in. Uh, we are not poisoned. Uh, each investigator tests three willpower. Each investigator who fails, uh, so we will either be poisoned or not poisoned. Okay, what do we have to deal with this? Okay, well, we've got a logical reasoning. So Roland can commit that to his skill test. So he will go five versus three. Chaos Bag gives him the... Minus two, so uh, we uh, pass that. Awesome. So we uh, do not have to worry about that. Joe, Joe is not so lucky. We have to pass a three in a uh, willpower test and he's a two. Boy, these guys are city boys. They are city boys through and through. They are just not used to this jungle uh, jungle environment. Oh, you're welcome, CryoShark. Glad you're, uh, you're here. Hi, Jacob. Welcome to the stream. I'm glad you could make it today. It's, uh, I, was, uh, I hope everyone had a great weekend. Uh, I was uh, busy running uh, my boys to soccer. Uh, so I, didn't, uh, I was hoping to get in a, a few games, but I did not. Uh, so I was uh, really looking forward to streaming. I was hoping I'd be able to stream on Monday as well, but uh, I've been busy working, getting my new s uh, system set up and uh, ran into a lot of technical issues that I was not expecting. So that was a pain but uh, we're streaming today uh, i will not be streaming on friday because i have uh, prior commitments but uh, i hope you'll tune in for the sinking city stream uh, if that works out tomorrow roll uh, joe's got to make a test he's just got to go straight up because we've got nothing to commit to it chaos bag gives him a skull that's going to be a minus two uh, because we have two vengeance points so he is going to be poisoned i believe he is. Well, well, well. Uh, where is my poisoned weakness? There it is. So Joe's not having a great time in the jungle, to say the least. Um, that is all we had to do there. So we advance to Agenda 2A. It's got a boom threshold of 9. Again, we can explore. And we have to... Uh, Hi, Frog. Welcome to the stream. Glad you could make it today. We are playing The Forgotten Age with uh, Joe Diamond and Roland Banks. Playing two-handed for the first time in a long time. So far, I think I've forgotten the hunch deck once, but uh, so far, so good. Uh, Joe needs an encounter card because Roland drew the ancient evils that advanced us. So let's see. I'm going to shuffle that to encounter deck one more time just to make sure. Joe gets... Oh, dear. Um, well, we'll just take one direct damage, basically. Or we'll lose our beat cop. Actually, we can just take the one direct damage because uh, we uh, were already poisoned, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, I know Roland is. Uh, I mean, Roland is uh, awesome, and Joe is also awesome. But uh, there are so many bloody agility tests in this uh, particular campaign that 
I think they'll uh, they'll get worn down eventually. They uh, they just don't really have the agility to be uh, to be not poisoned and whatnot. But we'll see. We've got to make a test here. We're probably taking a direct damage. Chaos bag gives us a zero. That's still not going to be enough. So we will just take the direct damage. Well, it's the investigation phase. Let us draw for Joe's hunch deck. Joe has a preposterous sketches. We only have one resource though, and there are no clues at our location, so we can't play that at the moment. So we need to investigate. We also have this Estly Guardian to deal with. If we move to, if we get the Serpent's Haven, we're okay. Uh, otherwise, uh, do I like the Forgotten Age? It's probably the campaign that I have played the least. Uh, I think there are a couple reasons for that. Uh, one, I always find it a pain to have to pick supplies at the beginning. I just want to play. I don't want to have to do any other uh, steps. Uh, I find some of the scenarios kind of annoying. I don't really like Heart of the Elders, the way it repeats. Uh, Doom of Esli is pretty tough if you uh, s you can screw that one up pretty easily and uh, end up spinning your wheels. Uh, I find Boundary Beyond pretty pretty tough as well. So the campaign feels like a bit of a slog at times. Uh, I do like uh, City of Archives is pretty is pretty interesting playing a Yithian, and uh, Depths of Yoth is pretty. I like that one as well. Uh, Threads of Fate is pretty good. So it it's not as... Uh, I find it a little tougher to play this campaign uh, compared to to others like uh, the Dunwich Legacy, for example, where I can bash off, you know, three or four scenarios in a night without breaking a sweat. Uh, this one, it always seems like there's a lot more thought that has to go into it. And uh, sometimes when you're playing, you just want to play on easy mode and you don't want to have to think too much about what you're doing. This one feels like it requires a lot of thinking. Uh, where are we? Oh, we drew preposterous sketches. Okay, so we need to get to a location. So we might as well... Yeah, Amelia, I I wish they had changed the ag the uh, agenda slightly to to uh to make it less repetitive. That that would be my only wish for that one. We'll see. I mean, we're going to play this uh we're going to play this in Iron Man at Arkham Knights, so it'll be interesting to see how that goes. Uh, everybody is supposed to bring a backup investigator to Arkham Knights just in case you end up dying and I think we may need two backup investigators this time around in order to uh, yeah Shadow out of, Shadows Out of Time is a is a very cool story uh, They the Yithians are always uh, great to encounter I know when we were playing Call of Cthulhu way back when at a convention Yithians were one of the uh, one of the pro antagonists, so it was uh, it was awesome to meet those. Uh, I don't think we've got any uh, cards uh, treacheries left in the encounter deck, so we can just uh, invest. We can just explore. I think we'll explore. Who wants to go first? Um, I don't think it matters. Maybe we double explore to get to Serpent's Haven? That might be worthwhile. If we don't draw Serpent's Haven first. Okay, let's explore with Joe. Yeah, Return to uh, the Forgotten Age is going to be very interesting. Uh, well, we do draw Serpent's Haven. Okay. So we stay away from the Esli Guardian for another turn. Joe moves here. There are four clues. Uh, two shroud location. Uh, 
two shrine location each serpent enemy gets plus one fight after you investigate or explore whilst at serpent's haven if you are poisoned you take a damage okay so we're not going to be doing a whole lot of uh investigating with joe at uh, serpent's haven hi agius welcome to the uh the stream glad you could make it today Yeah, I've only played, I haven't even gotten around to playing Return to the Dunwich Legacy yet. Uh, I am looking forward to uh, to seeing that, uh, to, to playing that. Uh, I do still have a very uh, soft spot in my heart for the Dunwich Legacy, so I'm looking forward to seeing how that uh, that plays out. So we are at Serpent's Haven, but Joe can't really do a lot of exploring here because uh, he is going to uh, take damage. Uh, he's only taken two though, so he could grab a clue. I think we've got a deduction. We do have a deduction. Uh, so it's, f uh, we can play our magnifying glass. It's fast. So we can go up to five and then we can play our deduction. We're going to investigate anyway, but we're going to do it. Uh, we're going to try to grab the two clues. So we are going five versus five versus two. Uh, no, six versus two. Chaos bag will give us an elder sign. Okay, so we get to, we get a plus one and we get to move an invent from our discard pile to the bottom of our hunch deck. Uh, so let's look at that. Uh, I don't think we're gonna play this hunch. So we get a, an evidence back. Uh, I don't think we're gonna play our preposterous sketches this turn. So we'll just shuffle everything in at the end. And we will go, we get two clues. Hey, that's enough. That is enough to advance. All right, and we take a damage before I forget. Uh, Beat Cop can take that. Now we can pull, I think we can advance here. We've got six clues, which is what we need. Let's advance. Now, I believe when we advance, we get Ichitaka. Now, uh, if we pull her now, we can parlay with her easily enough, I think, because we've got the inquiring mind. So we would go four, five, six, seven. Is she double parlay? can't remember let's just advance anyway I think we've got the this we've got the stuff we need to all right we advance we advance to act 1b the natives put the set aside Ishtaka enemy into play at the lead investigators location shuffle the encounter deck uh, discard pile into the encounter deck okay so that is a bit of a problem had I known she was coming to Roland, we might have done this differently. Okay, she'll hit him for two. Test four to convince her. Okay, so we've got a shuffle discard pile into encounter deck. done that and shuffle encounter discard pile into encounter deck we spawn ishtaka so we've done everything there uh, if there are one clues per investigator on ishtaka place her in the victory display so we need to parlay with her twice and she has alert and retaliate doesn't she and if you fail she attacks us Hmm. All right, how are we 
we're going to do this. We are not set up to deal with this sort of situation very easily. We can deal her. We might just try to kill her. But that's tough too. Five, man, oh man. Um, yeah, I should have kept Roland and uh, Joe together for this. Because now we've we've separated them, and we need uh, we need Joe back there. And even then, Joe can't really help. Um, he's a three. He's four. Five, six, seven. Uh, we, if Joe moves back, we can hit her for three damage in a turn. Yeah, if we, we could discard both beat cops. That gets us uh, two damage. Then we go Uh, then we hit her for two more. Yeah, I think we're going to have to kill her. Don't think we've got a choice. We've got to kill her. Uh, all right. So she's got four health. So I have to move Joe back. All right. So what we do... Thanks for uh, thanks for coming, Matsutori Taka. Glad to, that you could make it today. We uh, we're gonna try to kill Ichitaka here. I think that's the plan. We are gonna have to go. Uh, so it's Roland's turn. Yes, if you had fine clothes, it does help you with the Ichitaka parlay. I often include them in the deck just for that reason. Uh, makes it a lot easier killing her she's only got four health which is probably the best uh, the best part here uh, so we're gonna take an action we're gonna throw everything we have at it uh, Roland is committing the overpower and a beat cop and Joe will commit his uh, vicious blow so we are going four, five, six, seven, eight versus five. Eight versus five. And then if we hit her, then we will discard our beat cops to kill her. Eight versus five. This is a huge pull here. Chaos Bag says zero. So we do succeed. All right, and we get a card for the overpower. There's a machete. So she takes two damage from those, and then we end up discarding beat cops during free trigger windows to do two more damage to her, and she will go down. Whoops, there we go. So we add her to the victory display. Okay. So we've added Ishtaka to the victory display. If she is defeated, we advance. All right, Ishtaka. If you defeated Ishtaka, remember you fought with her. Choose an investigator to take control of the set aside Alejandro Vela asset. Add one uh, tablet token to the chaos bag for the remainder of the campaign. Now, who wants to take this guy? Uh, plus one skill value while investigating at ancient locations. Uh, we can draw two cards. I think we'll put him with. Uh, we'll put him with. Well. 
I think we'll put him with Joe to improve our odds. Um, no, we're not going to do that. We'll put him with uh, with Roland. So Roland can also investigate at four. Joe's al already doing well in terms of investigation. Yeah, that's right, Ben. I, I think uh, Roland does need the health soak, so we'll put uh, Alejandro with him. So that was our second action. Now we shuffle the three set-aside ruins locations into the exploration deck. So the exploration deck is all locations right now. And we have two actions remaining. Now, can we get anywhere from the Path of Thorns? Uh, we can get to the Temple of the Fang uh, which doesn't really do us much good. It gets us VPs, I guess. And we need six clues. Hmm. I think Roland needs to rebuild his hand a little bit here. We're going to draw some cards. We've got time, I think. We have no no uh, we have no treacheries left, so our explorers are going to be very good. We just need some cards. There's a vicious blow and an emergency cash. So not the cards I was hoping for. Uh, so we are at the end of the turn end of the turn so we shuffle these back into the hunch deck and we go to the enemy phase which the Estly Guardian just has his arrows he can't hit us from where we are so that's fine we go to upkeep uh, Joe gets a deduction. That's going to be very helpful to grab us some more clues. We need six clues to finish off this game. And we get another vicious blow. Okay, so we're, we're set up for vicious blow. And we've got a machete. That's good. All right, we go to the mythos phase. One of nine... Roland is going to draw Creeping Poison. It surges each investigator who is poisoned takes a damage. So Joe is taking a damage. And it surges into an Ancient Evils. And Joe's encounter card is going to be a Brood of Yig. He is plus two fight. So he's a four fight enemy. I think we can deal with him though fairly easily. I hope. Uh, everybody's got vicious blows so uh, we can kill him in one shot. Plus one fight and deal plus one damage for this attack. Okay. So they're both back down to four combat. All right, it is the investigation phase. Let's see what the hunch deck has for us this time around. Logical reasoning, so not helpful this turn. So Joe needs to kill the brood of Yig. It's four fight and it's got three health. So if we go plus one fight with the gun, we are up to five. And then we need a vicious blow to go to six versus four for three damage. Uh, I can't commit anything but a vicious blow or my machete. I'm not going to do that. Uh, we will go six versus four. Chaos bag says minus two. So that is just enough. So we kill the brood in one shot. So 
So that's our first action. Second action, we need to get some clues and we need to explore. So let's go, uh, this guy can't get us at the temple. So if we explore, we might be able to get there. All right, we explore. There's the overgrown ruins. That one doesn't count. There's the ruins of Estli. That doesn't count. There is the river canyon. Okay, I'm going to put this down here. So we move to the river canyon. It's got two clues. Now he can shoot us at the river canyon. That's going to be annoying. Uh, but we can heal damage. We didn't bring a canteen, unfortunately. Four shroud location with two clues. Uh, we are in good shape, though. If we we are a five while investigating with Joe. So we can go five, six versus four for two clues. And then we can explore, oh no, we won't be able to explore again. So he'll take a damage, that's fine. Uh, where does this go? Shuffle that, those back into the explore deck. So we can go six versus four for two clues. All right, uh, four, five, six versus four. Chaos Bag says, oh, there's a tentacle. Oh, dear. Crap. All right, so no clues for us. And we're going to take some damage during the uh, enemy phase. Well, I'm glad I didn't commit my inquiring mind to that because it wasn't going to help. Drawn a couple tentacles this game. Roland is going to... Now we've got two, four, six clues on the table. If we draw, if we move to Serpent's Haven, uh, investigate, investigate, Take a damage next turn. Uh, no, he won't take a damage. Okay, good. So we will move. Uh, let's investigate. Uh, there's a skull. That's a minus two. So we do grab a clue, do we not? No, th three. We're only a three, so we fail that. Uh, I'm going to get my machete down as my third action, I think. All right, so Roland's got some weapons to help him out. Uh, yeah, Frog, I took down Haster with a machete using uh, Zoe, so that was a, that was great fun. Uh, it was a reliable machete, though, not just any ordinary machete. It was a reliable machete. Okay, that's going to be our turn. Enemy phase, uh, Joe takes a damage from the Estly Guardian. And we go to the upkeep. We get a prepared for the worst for Roland and a Dr. Mylan Christopher for Joe. He might be worthwhile. He gives us more. Uh, we don't have an ally, and he gives us some uh, investigated resources. So good stuff there. Uh, we're at the mythos phase. Three of nine. Roland draws a brood of Yig. Oh, that's a terrible spot for that because he's going to get plus one fight in addition to the uh, plus one fight for the vengeance. So he's a five. We are a five. Uh, 
It's going to take a couple shots to take him down. And Joe gets a Lost in the Wilds. So three versus three. Uh, yeah, we can play the Inquiring Mind to deal with that. So we can go five versus three. Chaos Bag gives us an Elder Sign again. I don't think we have any Insight events in our uh, discard pile. Uh, we don't. So that's going to go, uh, that gets shuffled back in. And we deal with the uh, Lost in the Wilds. All right. So we see an enemy we've got to deal with. We go to the investigation phase. We'll shuffle up the hunch deck. Our hunch this time is a working the hunch. Uh, that might actually, well, we'll just discover a clue. We need more than one clue. Uh, okay. So we can grab a clue with working a hunch. We can also investigate, uh, but we might also want to get Dr. Mylan Christopher down. Uh, Joe can take a little more damage, so I am going to deal with him. Let's deal, maybe deal with Roland first, because he's got to deal with this uh, brood of Yig. So as our first action... We are going to attack the brood. We're going to commit the prepared for the worst and the vicious blow. So that puts us at four, five, six, seven versus five for three damage. Chaos bag gives us a skull. That's a minus two, so we do succeed and kill this guy. Uh, we get to trigger Roland's special ability, so we will gain a clue. And we can investigate. This isn't an ancient location. So we're going three versus two. Chaos Bag gives us a minus two. That's gonna be a failure. Uh, we will go three versus two. Chaos Bag gives us a skull. That is a minus two, so that's a failure. So not much luck in the investigation department for Roland. Thanks for ever. Thanks everyone for uh, showing up for the stream today. Uh, seems like a good good time here just to take a quick break, and we'll just take a quick peek at the decks that we're playing. Uh, just so everybody's caught up. There's some new people in the stream today. So here is the Roland Banks deck. Both decks were built by Start With A Name over at Arkham DB. We've got the automatics, the machetes, and we've got a bunch of allies, Art Student Beat Cop and Dr. William T. Mallison. We haven't seen Calling In Favors to make that uh, very useful. Uh, we haven't seen our Taunt or Shortcuts either. Or our field work. We also have Joe here. He's got a 45, his machetes, and Beat Cop and Dr. Mylan Christopher, as well as a whole pile of skills. Deduction, Eureka, Inquiring Mind, Steadfast, Take the Initiative. And his uh, hunch deck is just a bunch of uh, very good, um, just really strong uh, seeker, and, uh, seeker and Guardian cards. So let's get back to the game here. We are, we just had Joe's, uh, just had Roland's turn. He managed to grab a clue here at Serpent's Haven by killing the, the Yig, uh, the Serpent of Yig, but uh, so far not much el not much luck. Uh, we can go, I think Joe is gonna play his emergency cash to gain three resources. We are going to play our Dr. Mylan Christopher for four resources. So we're up to six 
investigate. Now we can investigate again. Six versus four chaos bag says plus one, so we do grab a clue this time. We've got two of the six clues we need in order to finish off this game. And we are going to go, uh, that's the end of the turn, so we uh, shuffle this back into the hunch deck. And we go to the enemy phase, at which point Joe's going to take another damage because of that stupid uh, Esli Guardian. We go to upkeep. Joe gets a 45 automatic, and Roland gets Dr. William T. Mallison. Uh, I'd love to get Dr. William T. down, but he is, uh, unfortunately, uh, Alejandro is taking up his spot. All right, so that is the, that's the upkeep phase. Mythos phase four of nine. We're starting to get to the end game here pretty rapidly. Uh, Roland's card is going to be another Serpent of Yig. Holy crow. Or, sorry, another Brood of Yig. That's two in two turns. So that thing is going to be plus three. Uh, it's going to be five fight. That's going to be a beast to take down. Uh, might need to use our Inquiring Mind on that one. But we will grab a clue, and then we can head to the Ruins of Estli from here. So that might be uh, the play there. Joe's encounter card is going to be a Curse of Yig. Good thing we're not sitting at uh, seven, health, 7 damage. So he's going to get minus 1 combat, minus 1 health, and he gains the Serpent trait. And if we can pass a Willpower 2 skill test, uh, actually Willpower 4 skill test now, uh, we can discard that. So that's probably not going to happen. Okay, so not... Not the worst phase. I really don't want to see the Serpent of Yoth. That's my, uh, he's my nemesis in this one. We've got 20 cards in the encounter deck, so, you know, odds are we won't, but uh, let's see what we can do. We're going to draw, we've got five turns, so 10 cards, or no, uh, yeah, maybe eight or 10 cards, so who knows. Yeah, I don't like that the Serpent Trait doesn't do anything either, Amelia. Maybe that'll be built on in the uh, Return to the Forgotten Age um, whenever that is released. Uh, it'd be nice to see something come of the Serpent Trait. I hate when they throw traits on cards and, and nothing comes of it. It's, it's just not that interesting. Uh, let's deal with Roland first. He's got to kill this guy. He is a 4-5 versus 5. That's rough. Five versus five. We're going to commit the Inquiring Mind because there's a clue at our location. So we'll go uh, eight versus five as our first action. Chaos Bay gives us a skull. That's a minus two, so that will succeed. Yeah, the Serpent of Yoth has victory points, but he's a pain in the butt. When it comes to victory points, I wouldn't really describe myself as a greedy player. I will uh, take what I can get, and uh, I don't uh, go out of my way to hunt for them because I find that uh, when you do that, you often end up uh, paying uh, a pretty steep price for them. I know last year at Arkham Knights, we, uh, we decided to get greedy and went after some extra victory points in the Unspeakable Oath, and uh, that nearly was uh, fatal for my uh, character. I think I needed to pass uh, two, was it two evasion checks in order to get out successfully, and it uh, came down to like the final pull. So we need to defeat this guy. Uh, we're gonna just have to take two actions and uh, hope we draw a good. Uh, a good number here. So we are five versus five. Chaos Bag says there's a zero. So hey, Roland, you're the man. We get a clue. We get that other. We defeat the Brood of Yig and we grab a clue. Awesome. Now we can, I believe, we can investigate here. We are, or sorry, explore. We can either grab the uh, the temple or 
the ruins. There's the circuitous trail. That doesn't count. There is the Temple of the Fang, so Roland does go there. Two shroud location with uh, two clues. Uh, gets plus one shroud for each vengeance point, so it's a four shroud location. So I'm not too not sure I'm going to spend much time there. Uh, we'll probably just try to get to the ruins here. We're starting to run short on time. And uh, we're starting to see more enemies now. Okay, so you go back there. Uh, Joe, we need something from the hunch deck for him. There's a working the hunch. Uh, now, I probably didn't gain a resource from Dr. Mylan last turn, but that's uh, all right. Uh, we could just grab this clue being fast. Then we could move and start investigating. Let's do that. We'll play the working the hunch to grab this clue. We'll move back to Serpent's Haven. We will explore. Now we should be able to draw the uh, the one we need. There's the ruins. All right, so we've got the locations. Ruins is protected from the uh, the Estly Guardian here. We don't have to worry about him anymore. Uh, that was our second action. So we are at we are at the ruins of Estli. It is a uh, it is a three shroud location with two clues. And after you fail a skill test while investigating, you draw the top card at the encounter deck. That's why we we've, we've boosted uh, Joe up as much as we can to. Uh, to get him to the point where he can actually do some investigating. And whoops. All right. Uh, now we have one action remaining, so we can investigate. We are going six versus three for a clue. Chaos bag gives us minus two. So we grab a clue and we gain a resource, thanks to Dr. Mylan. Okay, so far so good. That's gonna be our turn. We don't have any investigators at uh, locations where the uh, Esli Guardian can get us. So we just go to upkeep. Ah, Joe gets a shortcut. Uh, so that's not going to be all that helpful this game. And hey, double shortcuts for shortcuts for everybody. We find a bunch of shortcuts in the jungle. Not bad for a bunch of city boys who are more used to. Uh, Wow, thanks for uh, showing up, everybody. We're at uh, 27 viewers. That's a personal record. So uh, thank you very much, everyone, for, for coming out today. Hope you're enjoying the stream. We are uh, we are heading into the, the mythos phase here. Five of nine doom in play. We are going to draw an encounter card for Roland. It is a lost, uh, sorry, a low in supplies. Everybody loses two resources. I'm quite happy to see that one right now. Joe's card is going to be Snakebite. Okay, I think Dr. Mylan might be dying here. 
I uh, don't think we have anything we can do. Well, we can commit the shortcut and the automatic, actually. Um, thanks for showing up, Amelia. Glad you could make it. I'm uh, going to commit these uh, the, the shortcut as well as the 45 automatic to this skill test just to try to keep uh, Mylon Christopher alone. I didn't bring any medicine for Joe, unfortunately. I believe... Uh, Hi, Voland. Welcome to the stream. Glad you could make it. Yeah, I should be wearing a, wearing a headdress to cover my horns. Uh, they're small, though. So we're at four versus three. Chaos Bag says there is our third tentacle of the game. So uh, no luck there. We either deal five damage to an ally or we take one damage. Ooh, that's a tough choice. Um, I'm going to take the damage, I think. Because I need Mylan to investigate for us. I don't want to be drawing extra encounter cards when I fail skill tests here. All right. Uh, Joe... Joe's just going to investigate. Roland... Four Shroud location, that's not going to work for him. Uh, we do have four... We do have four intellect with... Uh, with Alejandro on the table, because we are at an ancient location. Um, we could investigate, investigate move move with shortcut uh, let's draw a hunch first of all our hunch is a preposterous sketches that's not all that helpful uh, Roland is going to, now we could get the VPs here it is a four shroud location though and we have four intellect and we don't have a great now we could exhaust him to draw two cards, but we haven't seen our weakness yet. Uh, let's give it a try. Let's see if we can get lucky here. Uh, we will go four versus four. Chaos bag gives us a skull. That's a minus two. Yeah, this is the chaos bag isn't very good here for us. So we're going to move back to the... Uh, actually, we can just go straight to Serpent's Haven from there. And then we can shortcut. Yeah, it is possible to play multiplayer over uh, Octagon. That's what I'm doing right now. Uh, I'm just happening to be playing two-handed with myself. Uh, if you uh, log on to the Octagon server, if somebody set up a game, other players can join. Um, the I know the uh, Cardboard of the Rings people used to use uh, Octagon to play uh, multiplayer all the time. Um, Octagon hasn't received as much support uh, during the Arkham Horror LCG. Uh, they are lagging behind in terms of putting in the, the packs. I do it myself, just for myself. Uh, the packs I put together are just really rough and, and dirty, and I don't basically put in anything except the card names and, and the information I need to, to get the packs working. So they're not complete by any stretch of the imagination. So Roland moves into the uh, Ruins of Estley with his uh, shortcut. We've got one action remaining after we fail a skill test, so we are a four versus three here. Not great odds. Uh, let's see, does Joe have, Joe doesn't have anything. Let's, let's use Alejandro's ability to draw two cards. Maybe we can draw some cards to help uh, Joe. Well, we get another shortcut, not, uh, not what we needed. It's Joe's turn. He's going to investigate. So we are going uh, four, five, six versus three. Chaos Bag says 
Skull, that's a minus two, so we gain a clue and a resource. Let's do it again, six versus three. Chaos bag says zero. Gain a clue and a resource. Man, Mylan's broken. So good. Um, yeah, Voland, I am uh, I am planning to put together a video on how to uh, to play the Arkham Horror LCG. Uh, yeah, they they are uh, they are doing surprisingly well. Uh, I am planning to put together a video on how to play the Arkham Horror LCG on uh, on uh, Octagon for those who uh, may be interested. Yeah, the uh, the City Boys have actually done surprisingly well. They are. Uh, those agility tests, though, are uh, are real killers. I'm hoping just to end the game here because uh, I've only got one health left on Joe uh, plus uh, Mylan. So let's go for the third one. Chaos Bag says plus one, so we grab another clue. And that is going to be... We've got six. We have six. Uh, so we can spend the requisite number of clues to advance. Uh, that's the wrong one. I never use that, the other one. Uh, yeah, the Esley Guardians were a little more, a little more powerful there. But uh, I don't think it aff affected the game. Plus one fight, plus one evade. Arrows from the trees gains surge. That uh, didn't matter. We can spend the requisite number of clues to advance, so we advance to Discovery of a Lifetime R2 for us in this game. Yeah, I was I thought the agility tests would annihilate them as well, and uh, ending the game poisoned is not going to be is not great for uh, for Joe. He doesn't have medicine. I only brought the one, so uh, so he is going to be poisoned. So we end up with an R2 in this game. Not bad. Uh, I'm surprised we made it through. I tend to, uh, yeah. So we uh, we finished the game. How did we do in terms of victory points? We got one there. We got three there, or two there, so three. Uh, we killed Ichtaka, so we get another one there so we get four unfortunately uh, Joe ends up with two fewer experience points so uh, Roland gets four and Joe will get two I am not sure whether we uh... so let's take a look at what happens R2 in our campaign log we cleared a path to the Etzley ruins uh, Alejandro followed the investigators. We get to pick an investigator and add him to our deck. Uh, Ishtaka is wary of the investigators after we uh, kicked her ass. And uh, for each victory point, our vengeance point, we add two to Yig's Fury in total. Each investigator earns X uh, equal to victory in the victory display. Now, we have to check our supplies. Each investigator with a blanket reads restful sleep. Uh, the rest read tossing and turning. So somebody's going to suffer some physical and mental trauma because somebody didn't bl bring a blanket. I believe it was Roland didn't bring a blanket. No, Roland didn't bring a blanket. So he is going to suffer a physical trauma. Um, check your supplies. The investigators as a group must pro cross off one provision. So each of them has a provision. So we don't, uh, that's no big deal. The lead investigator must choose one investigator to be the group's lookout. The investigator checks his or her supplies if she brought binoculars. We did bring binoculars. So uh, Joe brought the binoculars. He will be the lookout, so we gain uh, two extra experience points. So Roland has six and Joe has four. And there's some poison. 
Check your supplies. Each investigator with medicine may cross it off. Uh, each investigator who is still poisoned suffers a physical trauma. All right, so uh, both Joe and uh, Roland end up with a physical trauma out of this scenario. Uh, Roland ends up with six experience points and uh, Joe ends up with four due to his weakness. And we will move on, I think, to the Doom of Esli. I've been streaming for about two hours, so I think that's going to be it for this stream. It's going to take a little bit longer to play these games two-handed, but uh, we will be, I think, uh, we were, we're off to an okay start, so I think I will be uh, playing these guys again next time uh, when we stream. Just a quick reminder that uh, before I go that uh, I did launch the, uh, the uh, 2019 Patreon drive uh, yesterday. If you uh, would like to support the channel, I would uh, really appreciate it. You can head over to Patreon and, uh, and uh, choose a tier of support. There are several different tiers of support that you can choose for as little as two bucks a month. It's as little as a buck a month. Uh, you'll be notified of uh, what's coming up. And for two bucks a month, you can get your name in the uh, credits at the beginning of all the videos. Uh, we've already got a bunch of people who have their uh, stuff. There's also, uh, you can also uh, get uh, the chance to ask questions. You can get a, if you, uh, there's a tier where you can play with me on stream or record a video with me. And there's also one where you can uh, get a chance to participate in a Call of Cthulhu one shot uh, that I am going to be running. So uh, head over to Patreon and uh, check out the tier you like and uh, claim your rewards. Thank you very much, everyone, for uh, showing up today. I really appreciate it. Just a, another quick reminder, I will be, uh, if everything goes well in the next uh, day here, I will be streaming The Sinking City tomorrow. So I hope you will tune in for that and see uh, what that uh, Mythos-inspired game is like. Uh, I am looking forward to, uh, to giving that a try. I will also, uh, and then I should be back either next Monday or Wednesday with the next stream. I believe Monday is a holiday up here on the plateau. Yes, it is. So I do not know if I'll be streaming that day, but uh, I will definitely be back on uh, Wednesday streaming. And uh, I may do uh, a, a special stream on the weekend if I get a chance. So we'll see how things play out over the next couple days. I hope that you will uh, join me uh, the next time I stream. I love to have you guys uh, in the chat. Glad to see everybody having a great time and uh, enjoying the game. So with that, I am going to sign off. And uh, I look forward to, uh, to seeing you all uh, on the next stream here. So... Uh, take care. That's going to do it for this episode. If you enjoy what you hear, remember to like, comment, and subscribe. If you need to contact me, I can be reached at manfromlang at gmail.com. I'm also on Twitter at manfromlang. You can also check out my Facebook page at the Whisperer in Darkness channel. And if you want to support the channel, head over to patreon.com. Until the stars are right, keep your shotgun close and your other sign closer. Take care out there and happy investigating.